This is my 2002 Dodge Ram 2500 with a 5.9 liter Cummings diesel. It has 770,000 kilometers, or for our American folk, that would be approximately 105,000 miles. The truck still has the original factory lift pump and VP44 injection pump. I have faithfully added a fuel additive to prevent smoking upon cold starts. But now the truck's experiencing dead pedal when cold and smokes like a bastard until warmed up. Like many of you who are watching this video, I attempted to self-diagnose the problem and foolishly started changing out parts. Thinking the throttle position sensor was malfunctioning, I had it replaced at a cost of $800. And this still didn't remedy the problem. So after doing more research, I've come to the conclusion that the electronic module on my VP44 injection pump is acting up. Many of you already know the VP44 built by Bosch used inferior solder within the module which will degrade over time and cause circuit board issues resulting in a malfunctioning injection pump. The plan is to change out the injection pump with a remanufactured version but to prevent any possible issue of fuel starvation to the new injection pump I am changing the lift pump. I have already performed a fuel pressure test on the low pressure side and I was getting lower than required pressure. The VP44 requires a minimum of 4 pounds of pressure. Therefore, today I will replace the factory lift pump with an aftermarket fast system pump, which I purchased at JB Automotive for 321 bucks. This pump is rated to supply 70 gallons per hour at approximately 18 pounds. Well, I'm going to make this uh, idiot proof as much as possible. Uh, so I took the negative leads off on each battery uh, because it's such a congested uh, spot down there where you can't even see with the proper camera so I've already taken it out and I'll just show you what I've done inside okay so here's a picture of the lift pump taken out first off I disconnected the electrical connection which would have been right here then I took off the the intake or the fuel from the tank to the pump it's just a kind of a pinch style connection and then with this particular pump it goes in the side of the fuel canister so I took the banjo bolt off and then there's three bolts on top and one of them screwed right out of the top of the the casing here so I had to just pull it right out and the only other thing was there's this bracket here that holds and it gets bolted on the top of the bracket that's still in the engine block so after taking all that out now I'm just going to convert all my and uh, prepare my other, my other pump. So here's a picture of my other pump. This is a new one. So it's got the mounting bracket that will be able to use exhaust, uh, the, the Dodge one. Uh, the electrical connection. And this is the outlet port. And on the other side is the inlet port. So they give you a couple of uh, banjo bolts and a chunk of uh, fuel line and three more mounting bolts and washers and whatnot. And they actually give you an inline filter. The, the filter from the tank between that and the lift pump just to prevent any other garbage from coming through. Just one more thing I just want to mention. Uh, the banjo bolts that were being held, they're 17 mil and the bolts that were on top are 13 mil and actually the new pump the bolt heads are 13 mil as well so you'll have to have a set of metric tools. And on my model of vehicle uh, the outlet uh, fuel line to the fuel canister because it's a side mounted they want you to cut this uh, supplied fuel line to 8 inches so that's what I'm about to do cut to 8 inches and then install that so here's a picture of the, the fuel line that I mocked up here and now these pushing uh, banjo fittings and uh, just lightly oil them as they say because if you don't they're a bitch to try and push into this fuel line so I managed to get them all pushed in and oiled up on the fitting and inside the hose and it seemed to come together not too bad. Okay, this is how it's looking so far. I've put the inlet uh, bracket together with the, the existing banjo bolt that came with the truck and put a, a copper washer that's supplied on either side of the fitting there. And they do give you another small pin bolt that goes in here which lines up the bracket here and keeps it uh, in place. And then of course uh, this is what it looks like with uh, the outlet. Uh, fitting all set up there so 
Now I'm just going to take it out to the truck and bolt it in and uh, see if how close I can get for pictures and how well that's going to look. But okay. And you can see how congested it is back in there. I haven't put the pump in yet, but that just shows you uh, the bracket that, that's going to be mounted there. I'll just show you the pump here right away once I get it in. Well, I finally got it in. A word to the wise if you're not a contortionist, I wouldn't uh, attempt this uh, with uh, any anybody who's got a short temper because. Uh, I've dropped bolts and stuff down inside, and if you do tackle this job, make sure you got a magnet on the extension of a uh, extendable magnet. Because uh, my father worked in the aviation game for 40 years, twisting wrenches on radial aircraft, and I know why I didn't go into that profession. This could drive a guy nuts. Here's three must-have tools doing this job: an inspection uh, mirror, uh, the magnet, flexible magnet and a long extension with a universal to get down in there unless you're a contortionist this is not uh, for the faint of heart <laughs>